I'll talk about low-level laser therapy, LLLT. Low-level lasers have been used on humans for decades now. And I've had one in my office for 17 years. Now I have two. And I've used the laser on all kinds of neuromusculoskeletal conditions from the brain all the way to the feet and everything in between. With my low-level laser, the only contraindications to that is not on the eyeball, that's the same with all lasers, not on pregnancy and not on active cancer. Other than that, we can use it everywhere in the body and I have, if you've seen any of my laser shows in the past, I've done that. A quick, I, a quick explanation that I use for people on laser is this. It's light, it's visible light. The red, red and violet laser that I have, you can see that, so it's part of the visible light spectrum. And how can it have therapeutic effect? Well, if you think of plants, plants have leaves, and these leaves are solar panels to the sun that's 93 million miles away. There are invisible waves that come from the sun that come in and they go to the plant's leaves that pick that up, and then they make food, photosynthesis, okay? So smart people have figured out at certain wavelengths, if we shine wavelengths in a concentrated beam into human cells, it's therapeutic for human cells, okay? It helps them function, whatever the function of that cell might be, whether it's blood flow, whether it's digestion, whether it's a gland or a hormone cell releasing glandulars and, and hormones, whether it be skin, this is important for skin, a, a, a bad skin burn or cut can be healed, more on that in just a moment bone, tissue, nerve, brain. I talked about concussion, several great concussion cases that turned out really well by using low-level laser on the brain. More on that also as we move forward. So that's just a little introduction of what I'm doing in my office. And what's really neat is, unfortunately, some people will come in with chronic problems that have not responded to other things that are out there. We start using the laser and they get better. Okay. I don't make any promises in my office. This is not medical advice. When people come in, I say, I don't make any promises with my laser, but boy, it's worked for a lot of people. And then we dig in and see if we can make a change. I also want to talk about this book here, uh, The Brain's Way of Healing by Norman Doidge, a medical physician. And this was written in 2016. Fantastic book. I'm on my second and a half read. Uh, the subtitle, Remarkable Discoveries and Recoveries from Frontiers of Neuroplasticity. In this groundbreaking work, introduce readers to neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change its own structure and function in response to activity and mental experience. They talk, uh, so he has a variety of chapters. I'm going to talk about the laser chapter in a moment. But he has a variety of chapters on Feldenkrais and... Uh, visualization, meditation, mindfulness, and lots of other techniques for people where they were not getting better from their, uh, their uh, issues. He explains cases where patients alleviated incurable chronic pain, recovered from debilitating strokes, brain injuries, learning disorders, overcame attention deficit and learning disorders, found relief from symptoms of autism, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and cere cerebral palsy. So that's what the book is. I'm going to f uh, focus on chapter four of his book, The Brain's Way of Healing. Chapter four is rewiring the brain with light, using light to reawaken dormant neural circuits. I'm going to spend a few minutes in going through some of his experiences and other researchers' experiences with low-level laser on a variety of conditions, and then I'll wrap up to tell you what I've seen in my office. The therapeutic applications of light therapy range from the well-established neonatal jaundice and psoriasis to emerging trends such as wound healing and brain injury. Deutsch reminds us that neonatal jaundice treatments in Essex, England many, many years ago, a former World War II hospital with a sunlit courtyard was devoted to the care of y these yellowed fledglings, these babies with jaundice. Sister J. Ward was put in charge of these babies she took the most delicate of them from their incubators and brought them out into the courtyard in the sun and they found that they were getting better, okay? No one took her seriously until one day a vial containing a blood sample from a jaundiced baby was accidentally left on a windowsill in natural sunlight for several hours. When the sample came back, the blood was normal. 
Doctors were certain there was a mistake was made, but when Dr. Dobbs and Creamer investigated further, they found the excess bilirubin in the sample had somehow been broken down, so the blood in the vial had now normal bilirubin levels. So now you know if you have a yellowed baby, a little bit of exposure to sun seems to take care of that. Perhaps this explains why uh, Ward's jaundice babies got better in the sun. Inve investigations soon proved that wavelengths of visible blue light, that's all the light that we can see around us right now from the sun and so forth, passing through the baby's skin and blood vessels to reach blood and perhaps the liver too had caused a mar marvelous curative effect. Using light to treat jaundice has now become mainstream. Dr. George reminded us in 1984 that Dr. Norman Rosenthal of the NIH discovered some depressions can be cured by the sun exposure. A recent study showed that full spectrum of light, sunlight in particular, uh, could be effective as medication for some depressed patients with, of course, fewer side effects. So this gets now, so that's just a little bit of background of people thinking about light, full spectrum light from the sun being curative for, for a variety of things. Dr. George attended a laser conference in December of 2011. Now, the book was written in 2016, so this is pretty recent stuff. The first speaker at this lecture that he went to was Fred Kahn, a general vascular surgeon, who got into lasers 20 years earlier. He was a skier, injured his shoulder, Dr. Kahn did, and it became chronic. For two years, it was difficult to do any physical activity. Steroid injections into the shoulder didn't work. His surgeons told him, you're going to need surgery, and Dr. Khan said, I am a surgeon, I know what you're going to do to that shoulder, and I know likely the poor results that might happen, so he suffered, suffered with, it, with it, until one day a chiropractor said, why don't you try my Russian laser? This was back in 1986, and the chiropractor had an old Russian laser machine. In five sessions, a shoulder which was a problem for two years was cured, and it was a low-level, low-intensity uh, laser, which means, again, milliwatts, milliwatts, class two, and uh, you'll, you'll see mine as we go along here. Khan, Dr. Khan was intrigued. He re reviewed the scientific literature and found that low-level lasers help by bo the body by marshalling its own energy and cellular resources to heal itself with no side effects. So once again, when we're putting a laser on somebody, it's adding light photons, light photons into the cell, specifically into the mitochondria of the cell, cranking up energy. Energy is released in the cell and the cellular machinery can work better. Again, whatever that cell needs to do, it's gonna do it better. In the case of healing, if you have a torn ligament, tendon, cartilage, skin, muscle, whatever it might be, we need repair mechanisms. We need cells reproducing into more cells. It's going to happen more efficiently with low-level lasers. That's why wound healing responds well in some cases to laser, bad skin burns, and so forth. Uh, Dr. Khan was at the top of the game as a surgeon, but he gave it all up to study lights and lasers. <clears throat> he showed at this seminar unbelievable before and after pictures. People with wounds so serious that the skin was unable to close with bones and muscles sticking out with open festering wounds for over a year. After a few laser treatments, the body started healing those wounds and over weeks they closed up. Okay. He showed pictures of people with incurable diabetic ulcers, open gashes from car accidents, terrible herpes infections, shingles, burns, disfiguring psoriasis, severe, severe eczema uh, were healed with laser light. Other pictures show black gangrenous limbs dying from severe atherosclerosis or frostbite saved from amputation with lasers, and they uh, returned to healthy, plump, uh, pink in color. As a vascular surgeon, he knew good circulation is always necessary for the body to heal itself, and improving circulation is only one way that many lasers help. I explain that to people that come into my office. Another thing is, is a lot of people, when I put that low-level laser 5 or 7.5 milliwatts on them, most people don't even feel it. They feel the uh, uh, effects and, and benefits later on. But some people will feel a little bit of warmth or tingling, and of course that's activation of nerves and an increase in blood flow right there, right at that moment. Pretty cool. That's what Dr. Khan is talking about here. He showed pictures of other things healed by light. Torn hamstrings, ripped Achilles tendons, even degenerative osteoarthritis when the cartilage wears away. Pictures of patients showed cartilage that had been regenerated by laser therapy, 
Again, we don't make any promises, but Dr. Khan is saying this kind of thing happens. Khan cited reliable studies from the scientific literature showing that lasers trigger regrowth of normal cartilage in animals with osteoarthritis also increase the number of cartilage producing cells. Uh, there have been recently several randomized controlled studies to be effective in treating osteoarthritis. There's another thing that we can definitely use in lasers. Again, I tell people there's no downside. When we shine that on there, we're, there there's no harm. So that's a good thing, whether, even if it doesn't work, there's no harm. Another speaker at the same conference in 2011, so over, just over 10 years ago, was Anita Saltmarsh. She focused on laser light therapy for traumatic brain injury, stroke, and depression. Now, I've talked about concussion, traumatic brain injury. Um, I have some patients coming in with stroke. We're using the later, laser. Now she's talking depression. She was an RN with a research background. She became uh, interested in use of light for the brain when a chiropractor called her to consult on a laser case. The chiropractor was working on a professor with a Mensa level IQ who seven years prior was rear-ended at 45 miles an hour. Her knee smashed against the dashboard, leaving her with arthritis and, um, and a traumatic brain injury. She went to the chiropractor for laser treatments on the knee and then she asked, well, I've got all of these symptoms from the traumatic brain injury. Can the laser work on the brain? Now remember, this is uh, something like 20 years ago, so they weren't sure, uh, you know, it wasn't mainstream to be using lasers on the brain. Um, she consulted with the chiropractor and said, absolutely, go, go for it, give it a try. The chiropractor um, used the laser on the woman and after the first treatment on the brain, she slept for 18 hours, the first sound sleep since the accident years ago. She improved significantly, able to work again, spent hours at a computer. Her foreign languages returned after losing them from the traumatic brain injury and her depression lift, lifted. She found she had to continue the treatments to maintain her improvements. Her physicians acknowledged the improvements but could not believe light therapy was responsible. Saltmarsh told us uh, she was involved in a study. Now I'm going to just talk a little bit about research as we wrap up here. Involved in a study conducted by Dr. M Margaret Nasser, Nasser and Dr. Michael Hamblin and colleagues from Harvard, MIT, and BU. The common denominator here is that's all around the Boston area. Hamblin specializes in the use of light to activate the immune system and treating cancer and cardiac disease and branching into brain injuries. Very interesting, right? This Boston group has studied its use of TBI and found lasers helpful, uh, traumatic brain injury. Nasser, a research professor at BU, has done studies for lasers for stroke, stroke and paralysis and one of the several pioneers using laser acupuncture. One person treated by this Boston group was a high-ranking female military officer on medical disability who suffered multiple head in, uh, concussions in the military and from rugby and skydiving. An MRI showed part of her brain actually shrunk from the brain damage. After four months of light treatment, she was able to go off of disability and function so long as she continued the light treatment. And there's been other uh, studies that have been initiated by this Boston group in which uh, brain, injury, brain injury and stroke patients we're recovering lost cognitive functions, sleeping better, and getting control of their feelings, which had been intense and unpredictable after brain injuries. At the end of this chapter, chapter four in Dr. Deutsch's book, The Brain's Way of Healing from 2016, he shared a story of this woman, her name's Gabrielle, diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2009. She had surgery to take this brain tumor out of the brain stem area, which saved her life. The surgery saved her life. But afterwards, she had complications, balance problems, difficulty walking, speech difficulty, hearing changes, cognitive problems, short-term memory loss, visual disturbances, and chronic exhaustion. The story is very long in the book. It talks about all of these diagnostics and done and, and doctors, and everybody kind of figured out it was obviously related to the issues from uh, the, the damage from the tumor when it was in there and also complications from the surgery. Uh, Gabrielle, uh, Gabby, ended up visiting Dr. Khan, who I mentioned earlier, for laser treatments. After the second treatment, she knew her life was changed. She could concentrate longer. By the end of three weeks, she noticed memory improvements and greater energy. After eight weeks, she could concentrate and multi multitask, had more mental clarity, 
hearing had improved, and she was walking, exercising, and getting stronger. Dr. Khan has helped people who have had headaches from concussions, vascular dementia, migraines, Bell's palsy, and tinnitus. The Brain's Way of Healing, Dr. Norman Deutsch, has a whole chapter dedicated to laser and light therapy for all kinds of chronic pain issues, all of these other things that I just had discussed. 17 years I've had one laser. I have a couple of lasers in my office now. I have seen absolute incredible things to happen to people. If you missed my show on concussion, I talk about four patients in there that were not getting better until we did that laser therapy on them. Turned out really well. And I have used it on a countless number of musculoskeletal conditions that people come in with. And just as one last reminder, there are 22 FDA clearances for low-level laser use on humans. 19 of the 22 FDA clearances were written by the company called Urconia. Urconia. That research is available on their website, urconia.com. So this is a research company called Urconia that actually also produces lasers. I hope you got something out of this. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Thank you.